Okay, so you might be the last guest that I have because as you can see, we're packing up here uh, at AFSA here in San Antonio. We've had an absolute blast this week and you're someone who I've been wanting to talk to or meet for a while. Oh, yeah. um, and, and full transparency, I needed, a, I needed a mentor and I was I was just desperate for a mentor. I was just not feeling right. I was in a bad spot and you know, I hit you up and I got to say like you're the real deal and I say that because you were so personal and welcoming and you told me everything I needed to hear. We probably talked for like an hour. Oh yeah. I expected like a 5 minute I don't even know what, you know, but you spent like an hour with me on the phone, you know. You're the chief running public health for the Air Force, so that was such a, an honor, and I think it's a testament to the type of leader that you are. I think they they picked right with you leading our career field, you know, especially someone with such a kind heart who will lend an hour to a stranger in need, essentially. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for doing that for me. So I just wanted to start with just telling you thank you. Hey, no, hey you know what? And like I told you, you don't have to thank me, man. That's my job, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't have people who poured into me when I came in. Wow. Uh, so, you know, uh, like, like we kind of talked about, I never expected to make chief. Right. My job was just make the master and then retire. And then everything just, you know, things just started happening. Right. And uh, so when uh, I got the phone call to be the career field manager, my first thought was I'm the right person at the right time. Right. Because uh, we're going through a, a, a phase. We're transitioning. We're trying to figure out who we are. Right. And uh, my passion for the career field is one thing, but also my passion for taking care of people is, is another another avenue that I, I really try to harp and focus on. So it was crazy because you reached out to me and um, like, like, like I told you, I read a post that you you made and I was right. like, oh, OK, that's 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 different. Right. Um, and then uh, when I got the message, I was actually in my in, in a rental car driving from doing a site visit at Patrick, driving back to McDill. And uh, that's why I was like, hey, hold on. And then when, when we did talk, um, I had just pulled into my hotel at McDill and literally I just walked in and just went on and called you. And we had that conversation, man. And it was just uh, it was impactful because uh, I knew that you were in in, uh, in a place that I've been before. Right. Uh, so it was, it was really just, uh, it, it, it was an honor that you reached out to me. It was something I didn't expect either, um, but I'm glad that you did. And, you know, I always talk about this, this public health as a family. Uh, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So anytime you need anything from me, man, don't hesitate to reach out. Don't feel like you got to jump through all the hoopla because, I got that fancy title of career field manager. Mm -hmm. I'm just a dude just like you a dude, man. Right. And, and all we're trying to do is, is take care of each other and take care of this public health family. Absolutely. That's beautiful. How long have you been doing public health? Uh, so uh, just hit 25 years, 23 July. Um, wow. I did step out the career field per se uh, for about two years. And it, it was funny. So I, I, I went to uh, be the, the, the superintendent of IG and the wing staff agency. Um, and then as soon as I got in the seat, I got a call telling me I was deploying. Oh, so my goodness I did IG for two years, but then I deployed uh, for about eight, nine months wow. uh, as public health. Uh, and so, you, Dang, know, you went, so you went from one job to another like yeah, that, just just like that. Wow. Like, like literally, I start the week I started working in IG, I got the call and said, hey, you're up. Uh, wow. it's, it's, it's between you and another senior. Uh, you can reach out to him, see if he wants to go. He previously had, had taken that, that, that same gig, and he was like, I think it's a great opportunity for you. And I was like, dude, I just started in IG. Literally, I'm, you know, I'm going to do all my wow. training, and then I'm deploying. And uh, that's just kind of how it played out. And, you know, everything happens like it's supposed to happen. Everything happens for a reason. So I was honored that I was uh, picked up to do IG. Uh, but also that, that, that deployment was one of uh, – it, it was – I've been on three. I had one that was a life changer for me, but this one was a refresh. It was an um, opportunity for me to figure out exactly what it is the public health is doing. And I think it really lined up with me being a career field manager because it opened my eyes up to that whole readiness piece, but also how we're not really taking care of our public health family in the grand scheme of things and getting them ready to go downrange. Absolutely. And, and so, you know, just to get to know you a little bit, you just touched on something. You said that there was a life-changing deployment. Yeah. So just to get to know you, you know, your story, your journey, 
Um, cause we do have a lot of new airmen who, you know, not, might not be familiar with your, your, you or your job or your title where you're at right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just to get to know a little bit about you and, and the man that you are, the airman that you are, I was hoping you could run me through why that deployment was so life changing. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. I've talked about this, uh, more the past two years than I ever have. Um, not not trying to it, it's a hard topic right so that's kind of why i'm stepping around and getting myself mentally prepared uh but i just um i told you i had to go speak at the the public health apprentice course and um one of the airmen she caught me off guard oh wow because you know I, I tell everybody the only stupid question is one you don't ask right right and so the question she asked me was which one of your ribbons is the most important wow and i stopped and was like and I look down and I'm like, it's my Army Achievement Medal. And the reason why that one's important is because um, that, that, that uh, deployment was my second deployment. I deployed to Bagram, uh, Afghanistan, and um, we were the first medics on scene for a suicide bomb. Oh, wow. Um, but it, it goes a little bit more deeper because where the bomb went off at was where we were supposed to be standing. And oh uh, we, we, we were we were doing patient escort duty. Um, so basically the patients that were on the ward, we would go out and get their family members so they can come and visit them. Uh, we were held up maybe about 10 or 15 minutes because we had to go look at where where the PAM team was going to be based out of. Um, but if we weren't held up, I'd have been right there when that bomb went off. That's unbelievable. Uh, you know, so that was a significant life event. Um, but. I will also say uh, I really didn't address the issue. You know, okay. we, we, we do such a good job in, in the military of talking about take care of yourself and all that. But then when it comes down to that mental health perspective, uh, we stray away from that because we're too afraid of what's going to happen. Kind of did the same thing. And then when I deployed in 19, I got a call telling me I needed to go back to Bagram to help augment and assist for a little bit. And, um, not realizing how bad I've been putting that off and just right. blocked that from my mind. I uh, brought up a lot of old wounds um, to the point to where maybe about six months ago, I started getting help for PTSD. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm you proud know, of you. Yeah. I'm and and you. It, it, it took a lot to walk out on that. Um, it took some, some, some leaders and some friends, uh, our previous career field manager, Chief uh, Master Sergeant Cheryl Green, me and her went through tech basic, basic school, basic our tech school and everything together in our first base. Um, but it was really her putting her foot in my butt telling me to go. Colonel Poole, uh, one day he asked me how I was doing and I just came out and told him everything and blurted it out and then wished I could pull it back because right. I didn't mean to tell him. And he too was like, okay, you need to go get help. And then um, finally did it. And it's been, been life changing. It's helped me deal with it. But, uh, you know, just having those experiences, a lot of times people think we're public health. We won't have to deal with things like that. Uh, but my message to all my public health family out there, Pref Med, uh, public health and bio is that um, we go, we, we have a unique mission set because we're operational medics and our job is, is ball side. And sometimes we're going to find ourselves in, in, in those situations that where some of our other medics will see patients uh, as they're coming in. But sometimes we're out in the thick of it uh, because our mission is ball side. And uh, when you go through those experiences, take care of yourself first. Uh, yes, that, that's that's important because that is that's impacted me as a, an airman. It's impacted me as a man and as a father. Um you know, because the, the I became distant from everybody, but getting that help and, and getting that therapy has helped me identify how how I can be better and how Absolutely. I can be a better version of myself for my family and for my teammates and also for this public health career field. Wow, that's I'm so proud of you because um, that's a hard thing to bounce back from uh, yeah. a life and death, near death experience. You know, maybe in the moment and your and your nerves are up and you think that's it? I made it through it, and it's and it's over. And yeah. then something will open that back up years down the road, and then you realize it's kind of been there all along. Bingo. You know, uh, and it does have a, a 
a pretty fierce way of of emerging and it's scary like when that day happens yeah. when it when you start noticing yourself that you don't feel like you anymore that that's a scary place to be yeah. so i'm i'm very proud of you for you know opening your heart to like you know healing oh yeah that, that's huge that is absolutely huge um and i'm so proud of you too just for running you know i'm so happy and thankful that someone with your perspective the things that you've been through are running our career field uh because you're right that could happen to, to public health and i know that because i went to emeds uh shout out to emeds at cool. camp bullis there is that's one of the best trainings i've ever had hands down i really felt equipped after that training i yeah. felt like i could do it um but they they kind of did like a like a surprise ambush on us like one last time mm -hmm. just the pam team and so we were caught off guard and we did everything and we were doing tourniquets and and afterwards we're like oh my gosh because they were like yelling at us yeah. like it was wild and it was unexpected and i and i was like why did y'all do like no one else everyone else out here is like hanging out like why did y'all ambush us and they're like truthfully you're the pam team you're going out of you know outside the wire yeah. like you really need to be ready for something random to happen and that's why we did that yeah and that's kind of when it sunk in like oh snap like this is real this is the real deal yeah. we need to be ready you know and i took that training very seriously because of of what they were telling me yeah strong work man yes yeah, sir thank you okay so you know there's someone right after us so yeah. this wasn't a super long talk but although short it was the the story you shared was like amazing like you're you're an amazing person for telling me that um so i do want to end with this though i'm gonna put this on the public health page oh yeah what would you like to so we'll end with you giving a message to our public health airmen what would you like to tell them Ooh, that's a good one that is a good um, one sorry <laughs> i just dropped that that's very that's very broad yeah right yeah you know, I, I, I will say, um, you know, there's been a lot of conversations about the future of what public health is. And, um, you know, e even at, at, at in the ivory tower, as I call the, the defense health headquarters, um, I get up and I talk a lot about why public health is who we are and what it is we do. And, um, you know, as, as we're getting through COVID, uh, before people really didn't understand who we were, right? And, and it, it sometimes can feel like we were the, the, the stepchildren of the medical group. COVID hit and it was, where is public health? Monkeypox is, is emerging right now. Yes. Where is public health? Yes. Um, COVID highlighted where we are going in the future, right? Um, we all know that uh, when we look at future fights, you know, our competitors are figuring out ways that they can pro potentially harm the United States and a biological agent is one of them. Yes. You know, and, and, and when, when, when you look at the intelligence and you start talking about the big three, well, big four that public health and bio does, food, water, sanitation, and total exposure health. Definitely. We've had more people die from disease, non-battle injuries than warheads on foreheads. Wow, that, that's eye-opening. And when you put that into perspective, right, disease, non-battle injuries, disease, non-battle injuries. Right. That's, we don't often like break it down yeah, like that. You know what yeah. I mean? We use the acronym. Exactly. But if you really think about what it is, yeah. it can be avoided. Bingo. And, and it's preventive medicine. Um, so public health will always exist. We will always have a role. We will always have a mission set because we are the only ones who can do what we do in the United States Air Force. Absolutely. Our joint partners, our PrevMed uh, techs on the Army side, our vets who do the food mission, uh, they help augment and take care of that Army perspective. But when it comes to Air Force, we're the only ones who do preventive medicine. You know, wow. so think about how important and how impactful that is. And for the public health folks out there, that's why you're important. That's why what your mission does is important, because like I told the, the tech school students, you know, planes don't fly if people got mud butt. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mission stops when people get sick. Yes. A diarrheal disease can take out everyone. Mission operation. Yes. Yeah. That they're you know too sick saying? to even get out yeah. of bed. Bingo. 
and, and, and stuff's hit the fan and you need to get those planes up but the whole crew you know can't keep their fluids in their body bingo oh yeah and, it, and so it sounds like funny talking yeah. about it, but like going through it it would be a complete nightmare yeah that's that's why public health is important that's why we are one of the most important career fields in the united states air force because people need food and water to survive and sanitation yes and with those three going south that mission stops you have mission loss mission creep and that's where public health fits into that gap to mitigate that and ensure that the mission continues to function that's beautiful all right hey i think we're going to wrap it up i know that was super short but holy cow you you hit us with some heart you hit us with some knowledge yeah. and you hit us with some lessons learned and i have to say it warms my heart to know you are the career field manager for public health because not only are you spun up on public health and worldwide events but you really truly care about airmen you really do and, and i felt that and you even gave that to me and that was our first interaction yeah. and why'd you miss uh afsa this week where were you talking to the students you were talking to the students of public yeah. health so you were at right pack yes sir that's where you were instead of this big event with with uh the air force super bowl as i call it yeah. instead of that you chose to spend your time with airmen yeah you're the real deal Appreciate and i just want to tell you thank you so much thanks bro thank yes you time, man. absolutely all right everybody we hope you enjoyed this short talk with chief master sergeant wigington the career field manager of public health and we're out y'all cool have a good one.